Hi, and welcome to this deep dive technical session uh, that's going to cover the work we've been doing um, for the POC um, for Informatica Cloud Real Time. Um, so <clears throat> this um, this session is aimed at a technical audience, and we're going to be going through a fair amount of detail um, to look at the work we've been doing over the last couple of weeks. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to get uh, right into this. So um, let me just first bring up uh, our POC document. So I just wanted to refresh everybody's um, memory on you know what the success criteria are that we've been working towards here. And really what this is, what you see in front of you here is uh, a list of um, criteria that's kind of boiled down from the specific use cases that we've been uh, discussing. So rather than have you know three or four use cases that have commonly repeating patterns uh, you know, for example, the ability to connect to um, Edge, the ability to authorize against DAS. Um, you know, these are REST-based APIs um, for the most part. Um, and, uh, you know, something that we would, uh, well, and actually we've got a SOAP-based API for my Microsoft Dynamics Online um, and JDBC connectivity. But the point here really is that um, we want to convey the underlying concepts that allow us to connect flexibly to these different APIs, regardless of the fact that we have things like uh, custom authentication um, requirements, uh, such as digital digital signature um, authorization headers and so on, but we can deal with that flexibly within our service connector uh, architecture. So um, these are the uh, these are the success criteria. If I just run through them here, um, we've got the ability to trigger a process as part of a REST inbound REST to API call. Uh, we're going to look at that. Um, <clears throat> the ability to expose JDBC. Um, as, a, as a REST uh, API call, ability to look up to a REST API, to consume a REST API, uh, to also consume a SOAP-based API, which we'll need for Dynamics, um, handle OAuth token exchange. Uh, we have uh, an example within, um, within uh, DAS where we actually need to call out um, and do uh, you know, a, custom, uh, a custom signature. Uh, in order to uh, to sign the token, which will go through, uh, and we're able to do that purely through configuration, no code involved. Um, and uh, handle basic auth, um, that's a fairly straightforward one there, and also react to fault, fault code responses from different APIs to be able to branch the, uh, the, the logic and reroute. Um, in the process flow. So <clears throat> those are the criteria that we've been working towards uh, and we are going to use this session to cover in detail. Now um, initially when we were covering this uh, I took the approach of going in to see the service connector consumption part of it first uh, and then going through the processes but it, I'm actually going to change this around um, during this session and, and just look at the end-to-end -end process first um, and then we're going to dissect how we've actually achieved that because I think it's probably an easier way to digest this. So the first thing I'm going to do is log into the uh, POC environment uh, and as you no doubt be familiar with I'm going to go into the services and process designer um, so this design environment is where we do everything uh, regarding uh, ICRT, so Informatica Cloud Real-Time. Um, and <clears throat> just going through the various different parts here, so um, you can get familiar with this, uh, we've got the guides. Um, we're going to be using uh, an end-to-end -end guide in order to pull all of these different components, constituent parts together into an end-to-end -end, uh, long-running process, which we then use, uh, but, you know, put into a wizard-based user interface so that we can actually get user input from um, the, the end user and to guide them through that process, including displaying things on screen and so on. Um, that's also how you would deliver uh, mobile functionality. So if you've got an end-to-end -end guide uh, you know, or, or app that you want to deploy on mobile, this also allows you to do that very simply. Uh, the processes is where we uh, define APIs. And these APIs uh, can be uh, you know, REST-based or SOAP-based APIs. Um, typically, we would use um, JSON and REST uh, as a as a uh, as a design default, 
uh, here, but these endpoints that you'll see uh, us expose are able to be called um, via a basic SOAP gateway as well, uh, which is automatically generated. Um, but for the most part, we'll be dealing in, in, in REST. Um, and those processes uh, also have state, so they're stateful, they can run for long periods of time. Uh, you could have, for example, an approval process kickoff that has some human task and interaction, and as a result, you know, could, could run for, for months um, while it's waiting to be escalated or waiting for a response. So these are, you know, truly long-running processes as well as, you know, straight through um, APIs if, if you've got basic processing needs as well. Um, it really is a, a very broad spectrum of, of requirements that we're able to cope with uh, in, this, uh, in this part of the platform. Um, so uh, for the connections, this is where we're going to connect and create different connections to different data sources. Now the uh, fairly straightforward and obvious one is something like SQL Server for which we're going to use our JDBC generic cloud adapter which is a pre-built connector type for um, interacting with JDBC. You can see here I've got some basic JDBC style configuration details there um, and if I was to run a test uh, you can see that um, you know I can do a quick test and check that the connection um, uh, test has been passed. And we also, when we publish these connections, we um, the uh, ICRT actually introspects uh, the uh, the SQL Server data source via JDBC and extracts out all the metadata about the tables. And you can see one of the tables we'll be working with today. Um, called account um, and the various different data types that are present within there. Um, and that really allows us to work natively with uh, with this object, this table, uh, in the design environment. So it just makes authoring these processes that much more straightforward. Um, so I'll just close that down. Uh, other different types of connection that we're going to be using here are connections to uh, service connectors that we've built in order to connect out to these custom APIs, so DAS, Edge, uh, and then the SOAP uh, service for uh, Microsoft Dynamics uh, Online. Um, and these, these connections, uh, you could have multiple connections through to a service connector. Um, so, you know, this is really where you'll find things like the, um, you know, the secret keys, uh, usernames, passwords, and so on, stored as connection parameters. Uh, and the connection type itself, it actually points to the service connector that it's going to consume. And again, you know, when we do the publish, it will recall the, um, uh, the pu publish the metadata about those actions, which are then actually used in the processes and the guides that we're going to look at end to end. Um, the service connectors we're going to go through in a bit more detail once I've shown you the end-to-end -end process, but this is really where um, the initial uh, configuration effort has been focused. Um, it's actually very straightforward to set these up once you, if, you know, if you've got documentation to the API you want to connect to. So in this case, we had, for example, the um, you know the uh, edge documentation that helped us understand how to you know what we needed to pass through to these authentication services. Um, also, uh, that the same goes for you know what we needed to call in terms of DAS. So we had some examples of that, um, and likewise for Microsoft Dynamics. Um, so we put together uh, these uh, you know fairly straightforward service connectors, and we'll go through those in a bit more detail once we've seen the end-to-end -end process. Uh, the only other thing I want to mention before we go into the guides and the uh, the process itself is the agent. So we have a secure agent uh, which is um, listed here uh, and if I go actually I'll go into this view here so just go under configure runtime environments. Uh, by the way you should all have access to this environment that you're looking at now um, so you will be able to actually go through and take a look at the uh, the artifacts that I'm talking about here. Um, so we can see this uh, secure agent here which um, is up, lists it's up and running uh, and if we just uh, hop over here to the server um, you can see here that on the same box that I've got my uh, SQL server uh, running we've got an instance uh, inside the network 
that is running the Informatica Cloud Secure Agent. And that's really what is responsible for handling uh, connectivity to any um, APIs or to any data sources at all that sit behind the firewall. Um, and we, uh, we manage the uh, secure communication uh, with those services through this agent, which is um, uh, something we can uh, talk about perhaps in the Q&A if you've got any questions about how that works, but I think we've covered uh, covered most of those topics already. So, so uh, back to the design environment, and let's take a look at the guides that I've actually built out. So um, once we've got the connectivity in place to the various different APIs we wanted to call, I've put this all together into an end-to-end -end process. Uh, we're going to look at it from two perspectives. The first is from the perspective of a guide, uh, which is going to be targeted at an end user going through a, a process. Uh, and then secondly, we're going to look at the same underlying process being called as a REST service. Um, so you can see in my design environment here, this really is a, a, a you know, a BPM style canvas uh, where we've got individual steps and each step can have a particular uh, step type. Um, so just to go through a few of those, uh, you've got things like assigning uh, variables, you know, and fields from, from, you know, for example, if you get a response back from an API uh, from a, a service, you want to be able to copy that potentially and pass that information through to another service or you know to display it on the screen or persist it in a database. Uh, we've got the ability to create records which we use for um, you know applications like uh, salesforce.com but also for JDBC uh, compliant databases as well. Uh, we've got screens which is only uh, this is unique uh, a unique step type that you'll find in guides um, and this is where we define the look and feel of the user interface uh, the, of the step that we're actually going to display. Um, we also have uh, things like being able to call an embedded guide. So if you've got something, a process that you've defined that repeatedly needs to get reused around the business within other guides, um, then you can embed that as a guide and call it um, you know, as a, a sub-processor, if you like. Um, we then have uh, other things to control the flow of logic through the application. So we have a good example here. We're doing um, a service call through to log into the DAS API. And uh, when we do that, uh, as a result of the call, if I go into this, the next step and look at something like a data decision, which is another step type, um, in the selection of fields, you'll notice that I have all of the responses from the DAS login call. Uh, these, become, these fields become um, available to me uh, in the process because I've made that call, and I, I can then use it to make certain decisions. And one of the things that I've decided to do here is if I don't have a token it, as a result back from the, the login to uh, DAS, then I would just go to an end step. And in this case, I actually I want to, uh, because it's a guide, I want to show something to the user to show that <clears throat> the login's actually failed. Um, and I'm actually going to end processing there. So I can say ending type is the end of the guide. There are other types of ending that allow you to continue processing, um, uh, you know, despite, um, uh, you know, either having a, a milestone to save work or in the if we're looking in an API, that could actually be a specific HTTP response code, such as a 400, 401, or 500, and so on. So um, really, there's three main flows within this end-to-end -end guide. And if I look at the introduction, if I just view the layout there, you can see uh, it's a little bit scrunched up here, but let me just expand that. So this is a simulation of what we're going to see in the guide. Um, and you can see that we've got a number of different buttons here, and those are just the steps that we've, uh, you know, the outcomes, if you like, that we um, have allowed within this editing environment. So if I click edit, you can see here the prompt is the, the title of the step, and then we've got answers, um, continue, 
perform a DAS search or view the accounts in SQL Server. Those are the three uh, step types, uh, sorry, um, routes that we're going to support here. Um, and because of those buttons that I've placed there, uh, those um, uh, uh, answers, we end up with three paths. Um, in the view accounts, we're actually jumping, doing a, a step type of jump to the SQL account query. I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, for the DAS search, we're actually calling the DAS uh, service connector and we're calling the login action, which you'll see uh, under the authentication category, the login. Um, and you know, when every time you click on a service, it's going to display what the inputs and outputs are to that service so that you can decide what you want to pass it. In this case, we have nothing to pass because it's actually coming from the connection. The uh, parameters are already defined in the connection. But if you wanted, for example, to accept this in from the user interface or in the case of an API from the, um, the JSON-based request, then you could just you know, have those defined as input parameters as well. So in the DAS search, we do a login, uh, we get, we check that we've got the right information back, uh, and then we display the results of uh, the API call to uh, retrieve the uh, the, the uh, company record. Um, similarly, if I just zoom out here a bit, um, if I go down to uh, the continue step, the continue path, we have a login to the edge uh, service, which again, you can see here the output fields from that service call. Uh, again, again, you know, you find the connection here because I've published it as a connection using the service connector we've defined, we've got this Edge API um, and under authentication we have the ability to log in um, and a result we're going to get back the auth token and then you'll see in this next call we do, well, we do a data decision to see was, it, was the login successful? If it wasn't, let's show uh, a screen to show that the, uh, the login failed. Um, if not, uh, then let's pass through the um, the authorization token. We're actually explicitly setting it as a named uh, property here for edge token. It's not essential to do that, but um, in this case, we're getting back some uh, fairly generically named uh, output variables. So I've just assigned it to something a little bit more, a bit more explicit. In actual fact, what I what I could do there. Um, is just to um, give some slightly more concise naming to my outputs uh, within the service connector. Uh, so I would have called it the edge token in the service connector, then I wouldn't even need this step in here. Um, and so, you know, what I'm doing again here is I've retrieved the edge token, so we know we've got a login to edge, uh, and then we're going through and uh, retrieving the property information, displaying that, which is another uh, service call. So um, the only other one to note here, so we've got a login to Dynamics that works the same way. Uh, we call the login service, we check whether it worked. Um, we then call the create account action. Um, and then we check that the new account creation happened and we display the information. And then um, based on the user clicking next, we then uh, use the um, uh, create step type to create uh, a record in SQL Server to represent the account that we pull back. Um, and then we check we check uh, whether that was successful, which is, you know, you'll see a, as a best practice here each time in line with the success criteria that we had, we're, we're responding to potential errors and rerouting processing. Um, and then in this final step here, we're, um, we're actually running a query to retrieve uh, the, um, all the account records from SQL Server. Um, so it's just a, uh, an assignment of type query. Uh, and you can add in you know, various different conditions in there. Um, <clears throat> and in the last step here, we're actually displaying the results of that in a table. Um, if I click on that, I can see the table defined. Um, and control the uh, you know the columns and filtering and so on.